welcome to a video on 11.10.1. In this video I'm going to go through some of the improvements we've made in Ed Discovery since the previous version. There has been a lot of under the hood improvements to Ed Discovery to try and optimize for very large histories. Some King Commanders are getting near to a million journal entries now so We've been working on improving the subsystem so that we can read the database quicker, uh, lower the amount of memory we use, and basically improve the latency of the program. These improvements should make your loading of your history much faster and more consistent. For commanders with very large histories, we still recommend using options inside Ed Discovery to control memory use. These are the memory entries here which allow you to disable reading entries beyond a certain date or to select a subset of entries beyond a certain date. For instance, you can set this to seven days and read nothing and Ed Discovery will only load into memory the last seven days of history. Or you could say seven days and actually read, say, all the scan information but discard all the other various items. The next thing we'll cover is the subtitle box. This allows you to see in text what the voice system is saying. This is for anybody who needs assistance. To enable the subtitles, click on add-ons, voice pack configuration, and click on subtitles. The next time a piece of voice is played, the subtitle box will pop up. We'll force that by basically running actions on a previous entry. Departing one, commander. The subtitle box is popped up in its previous position. You can activate it by just hovering over it. Position the subtitle box to the position you want it to display over the Elite Dangerous screen. And we will reposition Ed Discovery to show what happens when multiple voice entries are received. If I run actions on the next one, Super Cruise, you can see that it's the text has moved to the top of the screen and the previous one scrolls down. Up to four entries are displayed. To dismiss the subtitle box, click close. It will reopen when the next voice is enunciated. To disable the subtitle box completely, unclick subtitles. The next upgraded feature is the stats panel. It's been completely rewritten. It no longer uses the main history to create the stats. It basically goes back to the database in the journal records and does it independently. This is a great improvement because it means that any setting you've set on the memory to limit the amount of memory that Ed Discovery uses doesn't make any difference anymore to the stats panel. The next system to be updated is the EDSM system. This system sends journal entries to EDSM to keep it updated on your journey through the Elite Universe. This system has been made much more automatic and warns you if it's going to send a large number of entries to EDSM. After the program refreshes the history, it looks to see how many entries it needs to send to EDSM. If it's a large number, it will pop up this dialog. This dialog tells you how many entries it needs to send and gives you some options on what to do. Your options are send all of the entries to EDSM, send just the last 24 hours of entries to EDSM, send from a specific date to EDSM, or indicate that EDSM is up to date and send nothing more. You might want to use EDSM up to date if you've used another system to sync EDSM up to your journal history, or you're using a new computer and you know that the EDSM history is up to date but Ed Discovery doesn't know about it or you can decide to postpone the decision. This helps to stop the situation where you've installed Ed Discovery with a large journal history and it says it needs to send 20, 30,000 entries. You get to control how many entries get sent. Once you've made the decision EDD will execute the action you decide. This dialog won't appear every time, it will only appear if there's a large number of entries to send. The next thing to talk about is the scan display. The scan display has been enhanced to show FSS signals next to the star. So you can see some of the signals which indicates carriers, notable stellar phenomenon, etc. Next to the star are displayed a set of icons, if applicable, showing the signals which have been detected in the system. 
These signals are the FSS journal entries that you see in the history list. Hovering over the icons pops up a tooltip with a detailed list of the signals seen. Clicking on the icons will pop up a text box with those items. Also added are two new icons against bodies. The red globe with a person inside indicates that the planet has already been mapped by somebody else and the red circle with a D inside indicates that the planet has already been discovered by somebody else. This gives you a very quick way to see the status of bodies when you're exploring. The surveyor panel has also been updated to show signals. Right click on the surveyor, type a single star in and it will show all signals or you can use some of the parts of the signal name to filter. Use a semicolon list to filter out specific signal sets. The next thing to talk about is EDD on Linux. We've given EDD some TLC to make it run more smoothly under mono. Here is Linux running inside VirtualBox on my PC. We can build Ed Discovery after you've checked it out from Git using mono build. Ignore the warnings, change to the bin directory where EDD has been compiled in and then just run mono at discovery.exe. Theming is pretty basic in mono so I would just leave it alone in its standard output format. Most of the systems work fine in mono, but we can't guarantee that 100% of the program works. For detailed instructions about building and running EDD on Linux, go to our wiki page, Linux and EDD, as well as updates to those major systems talked about before. We've also updated lots of other small items. You'll see the list under other improvements. And that concludes our introduction to 11.10. I hope you enjoy it and a special thanks to the commanders who helped beta test this version. So for now I say bye bye and fly safe commanders.